So let's talk about the third stage of the stand stage, which is basically the takeoff or the propulsion stage. It's really important that I go through a few of the structures we've already gone through just to explain a little bit about what is important in terms of force generation. Energy has been stored and now it's going to be released. Make it, you go face down, please. Sit on the spontaneous and serious little video. Good. So as I'm working through here, first thing you should ask yourself is how do I know the person is having some kind of issue when it comes to this propulsive phase or takeoff phase? Well, if we're looking at the gastrocnemius and soleus, we could get a decreased or diminished push off. We get shorter strides. And this may be, we may get compensations actually. And this may do to overusing the hamstrings or the hip extensors. Now, what effect that would have in general would be um, overstriding. And at any time you're overstriding, you get an increased risk of injury. Okay, let's move on to the quadriceps again. So now let's get on the quadriceps. Thank you for really down the side there. Good, we'll primarily get on to rectus femoris, but we'd actually have to do all different structures now and back. So if we're talking about the takeoff or propulsion phase, how would I know I had a problem with the quadriceps? Right back. Now, when it comes to actually release of energy, the quadriceps are particularly important. The rectus femoris right down the center. It's essential for knee joint extension during the takeoff phase back. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Notice in individuals that have really tight quads that will have referred to as a stiff knee and they'll have problem controlling knee extension. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, let's move on to the glute max. So the next structure I want to talk about in is the glute max in relationship to the takeoff phase of the stance phase. Okay, so Mickey, let's just get on the max for a second. Again, under the bread there. You okay? <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. The glute max is incredibly important when it comes to hip extension. If hip extension is compromised, you'll get a reduced stride length. There we go. You okay? Yep. And you'll also notice that, just like we talked with the erector spinae about extensive forward lean, you'll actually get extensive forward lean if you have a problem with the glute. You could also get increased lower back extension, so either direction, which is pretty interesting. This could be to uh, compensate for limited hip extension. And as a result of this, low back pain can be pretty common in a runner. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So I want to go back to the hamstring for a minute, just in relationship to the takeoff phase stance. Okay, let's get on there again. Doing okay there, Mickey? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and again, let's just put a little bit of torsion in there. Good. So in relationship to the hamstring, what you're going to be looking for is a reduced amount of flexion, and a shortened stride length. And you'll also notice it'll be, it could be inefficient leg lift during the swing phase. You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So even though we're talking about stance phase, it has an influence on the swing phase. Good. So just as I mentioned before about the importance of mobility in the joints. It's not just about the ankle joint, it's also the knee, the hip. So we have, kind of have to look around here and make sure that we have good glide in different areas. You okay with me palpating here? Is there anything? See how things are moving? Yeah. So let's go to the pelvis here a little bit. Okay, so I'm not kind of there. A little bit stuck, but not bad. Mm -hmm. Turn on your side towards me, please. Let me check out the SI joint here. Okay. Good. This I think it's 
could use a little mobility in there. And if I get in there and adjust a few things, oh, please. <laughs> bring this down, cross over, down. There we go, other side. Oh, this is the one that's really stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Old righty. All right. Down over and the drop. There we go. Perfect. Line you back. Now, even though we're talking about the pelvis, in terms of force distribution, anything that's restricted in the thoracic spine is also going to affect the lower back and the pelvis. So if you don't mind, I'm going to check your thoracic spine here. Yep. Shoulders. Side. Tighten there. Lift your head off the table. Perfect. One more time. Perfect. Okay. While we're here, let's check the knees up. Not too bad there. Fibular head. Checking for glide. Yep. Not too bad there. Feel tight on that one around the capsule there? No, actually it feels delightful. Uh, <laughs> right side generally is good. It's this Sorry. guy, my left one typically. Banging into the camera here. That was totally my fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I notice if I am out running, I yeah. get lateral knee pain. I think it's just a meniscal entrapment. Yeah. But that's what I notice the most is just that left side. Okay. But my guess is it's because Generally of not too bad though. No, no, awesome. Yeah. Okay. So as we went through here, I'd be checking the ankle, the knee, I'd be checking the tib, fib, going through the pelvis, mid thoracic area, in conjunction with all the soft tissue work that we're doing. So let's move on to the next, the swing phase.